Salawam, Yashallah. Spread them a patak, right? That'll be um, Kiba in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. And this, um, I titled this video, How to Stay on Fire for the Lord, right? So in these last days, we got to uh, strive to stay on fire and stay fervent in the spirit, man, right? So we're going to go into the scriptures, right? Go into a couple precepts and um, and basically show how to stay on fire for the Lord, man, right? Don't uh, dim our lights in this thing, man, right? And um, before I go into it, I want to say, Kahala Yahweh by Hashem Shai. That'd be all praises to the Most High God in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world would ignorantly call Jesus Christ, but we know Him as Yahweh Shai or Mashiach. Right, so let's go into it, man. We got to stay on fire for our Lord in these last days. And shalom to the mighty brother Gabar. Shalom, King. Right, let's go into the book of Psalms. All right, let's go into the book of Psalms to the eighteen. <clears throat> right, right. So this is the book of Psalms to the eighteen and verse number twenty-eight, and it reads, "For thou wilt light my candle." Right. Yahweh, my power will enlighten my darkness, right? So the Lord, it's up to the Lord to lighten our candle, man, right? So we got to want to stay on fire. We got to want to keep our um our candle blazing, man. We don't want that thing to go out, man, right? Let me read that again. Psalms 18 and 28. For thou will light my candle, right? So the Lord is going to light our candle, right? Put that spirit on you, right? And it says, the Lord, my God, will enlighten my darkness. And right, and at one time we were in darkness, right? But the Lord put the spirit on us and he lit our candle, man. And we want our candle to be burning nonstop. We don't want that thing to go out, right? And shalom to the brother Joshua, right? So we don't want our candle to go out, right? And let's show you what that candle is in the book of Proverbs. Let's go into Proverbs, right? Book of Proverbs, chapter 20. In verse number 27, and it reads, the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. So that's what that candle is. Our spirit is likened unto a candle. You understand? So we never want that fire to go out, man. We want to stay on fire for our Lord, right? I'm going to read that from the top. This is uh, Proverbs 20 and 27. The spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. Searching all the inward parts of the belly. You see that? So the point we want is that our uh, spirit is likened unto that candle. It's likened unto a fire, man. Right? We want to be on fire, man, as much as possible. Right? None of us is going to be on fire 24-7, right? Non-stop like our Lord, Yahweh Shai. But we got to strive and strive and uh, and labor, man, to be on fire as much as possible. To keep our, uh, our lights burning, man. Right? Let's get this real quick in Deuteronomy 4 and 24. Right? Because the Lord is the, is the fire, man. Right. Let's bring this out. Right. So this is the book of Deuteronomy chapter four and verse 24. And it reads for the Lord, thy God is a consuming fire. Right. So the Lord is a consuming fire. You understand? So we want to be on fire, man. Right. And it says even the jealous God. Right. So that's plain. It says the Lord, thy God is a consuming fire, man. So we want to be on fire, man. We don't want our spirit to go out. Right. And it says that in 1 Thessalonians, right? Chapter 5. Let's bring this up. It's the book of 1 Thessalonians. Chapter 5 and verse number 19, right? And it reads, quench not the spirit. And that's plain. That's the whole verse. It says quench not the spirit. So we don't want to be lazy, right? We don't want to be uh, dealing with a slack hand, right? Because that's ultimately how you're going to quench the spirit. You're kind of sitting back. Hey man, I, I used to read ten. I used to read ten chapters a day, right? I used to watch the videos, take notes, right? But now nowadays, I just like to play my video game, right? I'm kind of back smoking weed, man, right? I'm kind of back watching TV, man. That's you allowing your uh your your fire to be quenched, allowing your spirit to go out, man, right? So you got to examine yourself in this la in these last days, man, right? Because the only way you're gonna know if you're um if you're waxing worse in this thing, right, and if your fire is going out. It, that's if you examine yourself, man. Right? So let's bring this up. Let me bring this up first in Romans. Uh, let's go to the book of Romans chapter 1 and verse 28. And it reads, this is Romans 1 and verse 28. Even as they did not like to retain the Most High God in their knowledge, the Most High gave them over to a reprobate mind. And that's what's going to happen if your spirit kind of go out, man. Right? If your fire go out, you're going to be given over into a reprobate mind. Right? Because you don't want to retain uh, this knowledge in your mind, man. Right? You kind of put uh, worldly wisdom over the wisdom of God, man. Right? Now you're going into uh, damn Christianity. Right? You say you're an Egyptian and now you're uh, learning about uh, 
commit, man. Right? We're not no damn Egyptians, man. Right? And we don't serve uh, white Jesus, man. Right? So let me read this again from the top. It says, even as they did not like to retain the Most High God in their knowledge, right? The Most High gave them over to a reprobate mind. So you don't want to be given over to a reprobate mind, man. You don't want your light to go out in this thing. You want your thing that you want to, uh, your fire to continue burning. You understand? And it says, to do those things which are not convenient. And that's what's going to happen if your light go out. You're going to begin to do those things that's not convenient. You're going to be back in the world in all matters of folly, man. Right? Everything that you gave up, you're going to go back to it, man. Like like the Lord said, like a damn dog returns back into his vomit, man. That's what's going to happen if you let your fire go out, man. Right? Let me bring that out real quick. Go to Proverbs 26, and I believe it's verse 11. So this is the book of Proverbs, chapter 26 and verse 11. And it reads, as a dog returned to his vomit, right? So a fool returned to his folly. So just like a dog vomits and he returns to it and licks it up, that's how a fool returns into his folly, right? You got rid of smoking weed. You got rid of, be you got rid of being a damn stripper in the world. You got rid of being a damn gangster, so-called gangster in the world, right? You used to rob your brothers in all matters of folly, but now you go back and do it, man. You're, like a, you, you're just like a dog that vomited Right? Kind of walk away from the vomit and go back and damn lick it up, man. You understand? That's being a reprobate in the mind. That's why we have to constantly examine ourselves. So let me bring this out in 2 Corinthians. Right? And then we're going to get into it. Right? So this is the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 13 and verse 5. And it reads, examine yourselves. Right? Whether you be in the faith. Right? So you got to examine yourself. Whether you be in the faith, man. Right? Or whether you're waxing uh, worse than this thing. You understand? Right? Uh, do you really believe in Yahweh Shai? Right? Do you really believe that a, a, a so-called black man is going to crack the sky with a, a, a billions of chariots and come deliver you? We, we really believe these things, man. Right? You got to believe every word in these scriptures, man. Right? Don't give yourself over into a reprobate mind. You understand? For a lack of faith. You understand? Right? So it says, examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Yahweh Shai Hamashiach is in you, except you be reprobate. So the only way you're not going to know your own self, if you become a reprobate in this thing. The only way you're not going to examine yourself is if you're um, becoming a reprobate, man. You're letting your fire go out, man. Right? You're not thinking about the words of the Lord no more. You're giving yourself over to vanity. You understand? And um, One more precept on that, and then we're going to move on. Right? We're going to get into it. Right, so this is the book of uh, Luke chapter 21 and verse 34, and it reads, Take heed to yourselves, and this is our Lord and Savior, this is Jehovah Shai's word, his red letter. It says, Take heed to yourselves, lest at any times your heart be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. So l don't let your uh, your mind be overcharged with the cares of this life. You understand? Continue to meditate uh, uh, on the ways of the Lord. Continue to meditate on this word. You understand? And it says, and so that day come upon you unawares. And if, if you uh give yourself over to a reprobate mind, the Lord is going to return and destroy you on the day where you're not expecting him, huh? Right? So we got to stay on fire as much as possible, right? So how 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 are we supposed to stay on fire, man? Let's get into it. So uh, uh one thing we have to do, we have to read, man. Right? You have to uh crack open your Bible, get in there and read, man. Right? So um. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 34, verse 16. So you don't want to just uh, learn that you're an Israelite, right? And you're kind of walking around like, yeah, I'm a Judite. I'm from the tribe of Levi. I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. But you never read about uh, your forefathers. You never watch the videos and take notes, man. You kind of just know you're an Israelite in this thing, man. Right? That's being lukewarm in this thing. You understand? You have to read, right? And you should be. You should love to read about the accounts of your forefathers. You understand? And it says, let's read it. This is Isaiah 34, 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read, right? And that's plain, right? We have to seek. Uh, the Lord says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read, right? And it says, no one of these shall fail. So none of these prophecies or anything in this Bible that you read is going to fail, right? And it says, none shall want her mate, for my mouth it have commanded and his spirit have gathered them up, right? So the point we want is that we have to open up this the uh, scriptures and read, man. Right? That's part of how you're going to stay on fire. Right? How are you going to know how to deal with certain situations if you never read? You understand? How are you going to continually keep this word in your heart and in your mind if you never read? How are you going to remember the precepts and how to deal uh, uh, with uh, certain things if you never read? You understand? And that's why the Lord said in Revelation 1 and 3, Blesses he that readeth. Right? We're going to bring it out. 
So this is the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 3, and it reads, Blessed is he that readeth. Right? That's why a lot of our people, they claim to love the Most High God, but they're in a damn Christian church believing that um, so-called Jesus Christ is a damn white man. Right? But if you were to open your Bible and read, you will understand, like, wait, the Bible says um, Yahweh Shai is a, a, um, a, a, he has a skin like brass. You understand? Uh, Salakia. It says he has skin like brass. And it says, um, Salakia, I'm going to read that again. Revelation 1 and 3. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. Right. So we have to read, man. Right. Let's go to another precept. So this is the book of Romans. Chapter 15 and verse four. Right. And it reads for whatsoever things were written the fourth time were written for our learning. So everything in this Bible, they were written for our learning, right? So you have to get into the accounts and know how to deal with things, right? When we read about uh, David, when he went off, right? We learned like, uh, maybe I should stop everything I'm doing and fast, right? Maybe I should cry out unto the Lord and ask for repentance, right? Through the uh, accounts, we read and we learn that, uh, the things that we have to do. When we read about our um, forefathers, the apostles being persecuted for this word, we understand like, man, they, they didn't get scared and stop uh, preaching, Right. So that when that day come and you're persecuted for this word, you're going to get right back out and start preaching just like your forefathers did. You understand? So it's important. Right. To um, open this book and read. man. Right. I'm going to read this again. It's a heavy scripture. Right. Romans 15 and four. For whatsoever things were written aforetime time were written for our learning. Right. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope and through patience and, and, and um Comfort of the scriptures, you're going to have hope and you're going to build faith. You understand? So if you never open up your Bible and read, right, you never open up your Bible and study the precepts. How are you going to build hope and build faith? Right. And, and I'm going to keep uh, reiterating this point. How are you going to know how to deal with certain situations like your forefathers did? How are you going to know what pleases the Lord and what displeases the Lord if you never read, man? Right. So it's important to read. That's why the Lord said, blessed is he that readeth. And that's why the Lord said, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read, man. Right. So let's go to Syrac to the 2 and verse 10. Just to touch on what we were just bringing out. Right? And um, this is the book of Syrac to the 2 and verse 10. And it reads, look at the generations of old and see. Right? And how are you going to look at the generations of old? Right? If you never open up your Bible. Right? And it says, did any ever trust in the Lord and was confounded? Right? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? So that's why you got to open up and read. Because now you see that none of your forefathers that called on the Lord were forsaken, man. Right? The Lord never despised any of your forefathers that picked up this Bible, right? And um, followed his ways. You understand? Right? And it says, um, um, I'm going to read on, right? Verse 11. For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long suffering, very, very pitiful and forgiveth sins and saveth in time of affliction, man. But we wouldn't know these things if we didn't open up the, bu the book and read. Right. So it's a beautiful thing to know your true nationality, but it's not enough to um, just know you're Israelite. It's not enough just to grow your beard. Right. If you if you don't know anything about the Bible, man, a brother just taught you, hey, brother, you got to grow your beard. So now you do it. But you don't ever open up the Bible and learn for yourself, man. Right. That's how the spirit is ultimately going to sup with you, man. Right. And, and, and reveal things unto you. Right. Let me bring this out in Revelation uh, three. Right. Because Yahweh Shai is this word. So you want to spend time with Yahweh Shai. And the way you're going to spend time with Yahweh Shai is by opening up the book and reading. Right. Because Yahweh Shai is the word of God. That's pursuing the John chapter one and verse one. Right. And it reads this is Revelation three and 20, this red letter. Right. And it says. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. So Yahweh Shai is constantly standing at the door and knocking, right? And this door represents your mind. Yahweh Shai is always knocking, right? Trying to open you up to this word. And it says, if any man hear my voice, open the door, man. Right? And you got brothers and sisters that's constantly being called to this truth, but they don't want to open that door for Yahweh Shai, right? And it says, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. And you want Yahweh Shai to sup with you through the spirit, man. You understand? So we got to open, crack open this uh, book, man, and eat, man. Eat with the Lord, right? Eat with Yahweh Shai, right? So let's get another one. Let's go to Romans 10. Right? So this is how we got to stay on fire in these last days. We have to read. You understand? This is one thing we have to do is read the Bible. Right? So this is the book of Romans, chapter 10, and verse 17. And it reads, So then faith 
cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you want to build faith by um hearing the words, man. Right? So open up the book and reading it is going to help you build faith, man. The Lord said faith cometh by hearing, man. Right? And we should want to build our faith as much as possible, right? Because we live in, in, a, uh, in the last times, man. Right? At any second, all hell could break loose. It might not be no more internet, man. Right? They might kind of... um. Uh, make a decree where they're going to come and start snatching Bibles out of households, man, right? So you never know. You want to have as much um, um, information stored up in you as possible through the Spirit, right? As much as the uh, precepts that you could stored up in you as possible, man, right? Because you never know, man, right? Anything can happen, right? And this word is a fire, man, right? So... Uh, uh, what better what better way could you stay on fire but by continuing in, in the word, man? Continuing to read, continuing to study, man. Because we understand that this word is a fire, man. Let's bring it up. <clears throat> so this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23 and verse 29. And it reads, is not my word like as a fire? So the Lord said, is not my word like as a fire, right? And that's plain. The word is a fire, right? And it says, set the Lord and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. So the word of God is like a fire and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces, man. Right? Let's get another one in Jeremiah. Oh, uh, this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 20 and verse. I'm going to start from seven to uh, kind of get the context, right? And it says, O Lord, O Lord, thou hast deceived me and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, right? And it says, it has prevailed. I am in derision daily, everyone mocketh me, right? And a lot of us go through that, man. We're in derision daily, and everybody mocks us for bringing out this word, right? Everybody mocks us for serving our Lord and our Savior, man, right? So Jeremiah said, I am in derision daily, and everyone mocketh me, right? So our forefathers went through these things, man. Don't think it's a strange thing, right? Any of the temptations you go through, right? Anything you go through, don't think it's something strange. Our forefathers went through these things too, and they prevailed, right? And it says... For since I spake, I cried out, I cried violence and spoil, because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me and a derision and a derision daily. So he said the word was made a reproach unto me, man. Right? Everybody uh looking at me, uh looking down on me ever since I started being a prophet, man. Everybody looking at me different ever since I started proclaiming the words of God, man. Right? But don't let that thing make you uh weak. Right? And it says, this is the point I want. This is a heavy point. And it says. Then I said, I would not make mention of him. So Jeremiah got so so tired of everybody looking down on him that he said he's not going to make uh, mention of the word anymore. You understand? Right? And it says, nor speak any more in his name. And he said, I'm not going to speak in the name of the Lord anymore. Right? And it says, but his word was in my heart as a burning fire. Right? So that's why we have to read. Right? This word was in his heart as a burning fire. When you hear this word, you might be down in the spirit. You might be ready to give up and somebody say that right precept or that right. Uh, they read the right account for you to get back on fire, man, because this word is a fire, man. Right. And it says, uh, shut up in my bones. And I was worried with forbearing and I could not stay. So he said, man, I had to get back to prophesying, man. Right. Because this word was like a fire in my heart. Shut up in my bones. And shalom to the mighty brother Daniel. Shalom, king. Right. Let's go into another account. Going to Luke 24 and 32. Right, so this is the book of Luke, chapter 24 and verse 32, and it reads, And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn in within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures? So when this is word is coming out, when brothers kind of opening up the scriptures and bringing it out, hey, man, your heart should burn within you, man. And we understand that our heart is, uh, in the scriptures, is talking about our mind, man. So it should set you on fire when you hear this word coming out, man. I'm going to read this again. It's a mighty precept. And this is talking about the apostles when Yahweh Shai appear, appeared unto them after their death, right? And it says, and they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way, right? And while he opened to us the scriptures. So when these scriptures get open and brothers start to bring it out, man, they all, yeah, it, hey, it just sets you on fire, man, right? You might have been in a bad mood. You might be going through this. You might be going through the, uh, the worst temptation of your life. But when that word coming out, it should uplift you, man, right? You should be uh, feeling better in the spirit. Right. That's why it's important to read, man. So what else can we do besides reading to help us stay on fire in these last days, man? We have to make sure our mind is in the uh, right uh, in the right place, man. Make sure we're thinking upon the, uh, the ordinances of the Lord. You understand? Make sure you're thinking on this word, man. Right. So let's get into it. Right. So we went through reading. You have to read to stay on fire. You also have to meditate. Right. So you have to meditate on righteous things, man. So let's go into it. Right. So this is the book of Psalms. Chapter 19 
in verse number 14. And it reads, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. So you want the words of your mouth, the things you speak, and also the things that's on your mind, the things that you're thinking upon to be acceptable in the sight of the Lord, man. Right? And it says, my, oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, man. Right? So you want to meditate on righteous things. You want to meditate on these words, man. You want to meditate on the accounts of your forefathers. You understand? You want to meditate on the acts of Yahweh Shai. You want to meditate on the acts of the apostles. You want to meditate on... um. Uh, Daniel being delivered out of the lion's den, man. It's all, it's an all, it's, it's, it's plenty beautiful things in the scriptures that you could constantly meditate on, man. Meditate on your favorite precept throughout the day. You might be at work, you're kind of working with your hands, you, don't, you can't read while you're at work. Hey, but be meditating on your favorite scriptures. Meditate on your favorite account, you understand? Keep this word on your mind, man, right? Let's go into the book of Sirach 39, right? And this is a heavy, this is a heavy uh, chapter dealing with the meditation at the beginning of the chapter, right? So this is the book of Sirach, chapter 39 and verse 1. And it reads, But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof, you see that, right? It says, will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient, right? So when you occupy in the meditation of the scriptures, you're going to seek out the wisdom of all the ancient. And where are you going to find the wisdom of all the ancient? Right? You're going to find it in the scriptures, man. So it all it goes back to reading also, right? And it says, and be occupied in prophecies, right? And that also goes back to reading because you have to read about the prophecies, right? And it says, he will keep the sayings of renowned men. Where subtle, where subtle parables are, he will be there also. So it's telling you, man, if you meditate on this word, you're going to be on fire. If you constantly keep the words of God on your mind, you're going to be on fire. The Lord said, he will keep the sayings of the renowned men, and where subtle parables are, he will be there also. He will seek out the secrets of grave sentences and be conversant in dark parables. You see that? So when you are constantly meditating on this word, you're going to seek out the secrets of grave sentences and be conversant in dark parables. You're going to understand them dark parables that uh, a lot of people won't be able to understand, man, because you constantly give your mind unto the meditation of, of the Lord, right? And it says... He shall serve among great men. So the Lord is basically telling you, this man that's constantly meditating on my word, this sister that's constantly meditating on my word, they're gonna be on, they're gonna be on fire, man. Right? It says, He shall serve among great men and appear before princes. He will travel through strange countries, for he hath tried the good and the evil among men. Right? And it says, Um, he will give his heart to resort early to the Lord that made him and will pray before the most high. Right? So once you wake up in the morning, you're gonna be praying to the Lord, man. Right? And it says, um, Salakia, and he will open his mouth in prayer and make supplication for his sins. So this, hey, this this is listening on of things that this man, this uh sister, right, this brother or sister that constantly meditating on the word, this is what they're going to be doing, man. Right? And it says, um, when the great Lord will, he shall be filled with the spirit of understanding. He shall pour out wise sentences and give thanks unto the Lord in his prayer. He shall direct his counsel and knowledge, and, and in his secrets shall he meditate. You see that? He shall show forth that which he have learned, and shall glory in the law of the covenant of the Lord. Many shall commend his understanding, and so long as the road endureth, it shall not be blotted out. His memorial shall not depart away. His name shall live from generation to generation. You see that? So this all comes with constantly meditating on this word. Everything that I just read was, talk, was talking about that brother or sister that's constantly meditating on this word. So it's important to keep the word on your mind for you to stay on fire. And Shalom to the mighty brother Savion. Shalom, king. Right? Let me get another precept. Right? So that's heavy. Matter of fact, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this first, right? Um, What was... I? I kind of forgot what I was going to bring out. Well, I'm going to get this first. I'm going to get this. Let's go into the book of Joshua. Right? We're going to get the classic. This Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, man. Let's see, let's see what else the Lord said will happen to the, uh, if you continually meditate in this word. Joshua 1 and 8, it says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, man. Right? So don't never let this law, don't never let this word depart out of your mouth, man. Right? The day you wake up and you're not thinking about this word, you, you're not speaking about this word, hey, man, you got to know you're going off, man. You're going down a, a, a path of destruction, man. Every day you wake up, this word should be on your mind, right? The first thing you do in the morning should be to pray into the Lord, man, right? And get you a couple a couple chapters in if you got the time, man, right? But chiefly, you should be praying into the Lord the first thing you do in the morning, man, right? Having the Lord on your mind, man, right? 
uh, it says, this book of the law should not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, man. You got to be meditating this word day and night, man. Right? And it says that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. So this is how you're going to continue to stay on fire, man. Right? You're going to make your way prosperous in this truth, man. If you continually meditate on this word day and night. And it says, and then thou shalt have good success. And that's how you're going to have good success. What is good success? Is the Lord talking about you're going to have five Bentleys in the garage, man? Right? And you're going to have um damn uh seven damn um mansions in this world, man? Right? That's not what the Lord's talking about. That good success is talking about you're going to inherit the kingdom of heaven and all the beautiful things that come with it. You understand? Right? And I'm going to bring out the precept uh, that the brother Dan uh, put. Right? Beautiful precept. Right? So this is the book of Psalms, chapter 1 and verse 2. Right? And it reads... But his delight is in the law of the Lord. I'm going to start from one, man. We're going to start from one, right? It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, man, right? So you don't want to walk in the counsel of the ungodly, man, right? Anybody telling you to do anything or giving you any advice that's contrary to the words of God, hey, man, you got to, uh, you can't hearken unto that, man. You got to kind of uh, tell them to get out of here, man, right? And it says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Man, your delight got to be in the law of the Lord. You got to be delighted when you open up this Bible, man. It shouldn't be a chore to you, man. Oh, man, I got to read today, man. Oh, man, I got to get on my knees and pray, right? Oh, goddamn, somebody calling me for counsel, man. No, man, you should be delighted when it's time to open up that Bible and kind of uh, do the works of the Lord, man. Right? And it says, and his law do if he meditate day and night. Right? And it says, and, and his law do if he meditate day and night, man. That's a mighty precept, man. Right? So you got to read. We went into some precepts to show you to stay on fire. You have to read, man. Right? You have to read. Right? And, and we now we just went into a couple precepts to show you you have to continually keep the Lord on your mind. You have to continually meditate, man. So what else can you do to stay on fire? Hey, man, you got to labor, man. Right? You got to labor. You can't be a damn uh, sluggard, man. Right? You got to be fervent in your in your uh in your studies, man. Fervent when you're doing the works of God, man, right? Let's get into it. So you got to read, you got to um you got to damn uh meditate, right? And you can't be a damn slugger, man. You got to do these things day and night, man. Right? You can't wake up one day and now I'm gonna read all day uh one day, right? Right? And then the next day you don't want to read, you don't want to teach, you don't want to do nothing, man. You got to constantly serve the Lord, man. The Lord is a jealous God, man. So uh, anytime you're not giving your mind unto the Lord, man, you kind of, uh, what you giving your mind unto, man? You got some other God that you're serving, right? So let's go to, let's go into the book of the, uh, Romans 12. Right, so this is the book of Romans, chapter 12 and verse 11, and it reads, Not slothful in business, right? Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. And this is one of my favorite precepts, man. You can't, it says, not slothful in business, so you can't be slothful when you're serving of the Lord. And it says, fervent in spirit and that and that word fervent literally means to be on fire that's literally what that word means it means heat you understand that word means heat so you got to be uh on fire in the spirit right and it says serving the lord so when you're serving the lord you got to be uh fervently serving him man you can't one day i want to serve the lord then the next day i want to sleep all day and play my video game and I, I might just spark a blunt and not tell nobody about it man no man we got to be fervently serving the lord man every day our mind should be us uh, to serve our lord man to teach our people man to uh try to uplift our people through the spirit man right constantly exhorting our uh brothers and sisters in this thing man right so you can't be slothful, right? So let's go into the book of Proverbs 24 and verse 30, right? So this is the book of Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 30, and it reads, I went by the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nettles. So like, um... If you if you're a slothful man on a carnal level, on a physical level, if you um if you have a vineyard, right, and you're slothful, eventually it's gonna be a bunch of weeds growing on it, a bunch of damn nettles and thorns, man, because you're not constantly watching over your vineyard. You understand you're being slothful in your works, right? And it says, um, and nettles had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. And that stone wall represents your works, man, because we're constantly um on a spiritual level, we're constantly praising blick, uh Salakia. Uh, pray, placing bricks, you understand? We we re, we rebuilding the spiritual temple. We rebuilding the spiritual altar. You understand, right? So when your stone wall get broken down, it means all your work's gonna be broken down, man. Right? And it says, then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Yet a little sleep, 
a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an iron man. And that day, when the harvest come, man, when the Lord start passing out crowns, right? When brothers getting beamed up, that slothful man, he's gonna he's gonna be looking, man, right? But the Lord, hey, man, he might not make it, man, right? Because he was dealing with a slack hand. He wasn't fervent. He wasn't fervent when it came to serving the Lord, man, right? So we have to be fervent. We can't be a sluggard, right? Let's get some more precepts dealing with that. We're gonna stay in Proverbs, and let's go to thirteen and verse four. Right, and it reads, um, is this what I want? Salakia, um, I believe it's, uh, try 12 and 4. Con, it's the book of Proverbs, chapter 13 and verse 4, and it reads, The soul of the slugger desireth, right? So that, that, that slothful man, he's going to desire a lot of things. He's going to desire the kingdom of heaven. He's going to desire to have wisdom. He's going to desire to, um, to, to do a lot of things, man. Right, and it says, and have nothing, but he's not going to have none of these things that he desire after. Why? It says, because he, uh, it says, Salaki, because he's a slugger. And it says, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. And that diligent brother that's fervent in the spirit, that diligent sister that's fervent in the spirit, doing all that they can to magnify the name of the Lord, man, they're going to be made fat, right? They're going to uh, have these riches. They're going to have the wisdom. They're going to have the understanding. You understand? They're going to get the kingdom of heaven. You understand? Because they were diligent in their work. And I'm going to bring up the precept that the brother brought up. Uh, put right so Matthew 25 and 26 right this is the book of Matthew chapter 25 and verse 26 hey hey Salaki I'm gonna bring it out right because I was gonna bring this out right so this it says his Lord answered and said unto him thou wicked and slothful servant right and this is hey man you don't want your house to return and, and call you a damn wicked and slothful servant imagine that man right the Lord coming back and calling you a wicked and slothful servant, man, right? And it says, thou knewest that I reap where I sow not and gather where I have not straw, man. Hey, man, that's a scary precept, man. That's why it's important to really stay on fire in this thing, right? And try as hard as you could to stay on fire. If you feel, it, if you feel yourself getting weak, man, make a call to a brother or a sister, man, right? Pray as much as you can, man. You understand? Try to do as much as you could to stay on fire, man, right? Hey, that's a that's a heavy verse. That's not even the one I was going to pull, right? So this is the book of Luke, chapter 13 and verse 6, and it reads, He spake also this parable, a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, right? And he came and sought fruit thereon and found none, right? And it's talking about the Most High God, man. We're the vineyard of the Most High God, man, right? And the, the Most High God is constantly seeking for fruit, man. Who's, who's being fruitless or who's being fruitful, man? Who's doing the works or who's being slothful, man? Right. And it says, then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree. So the Lord might look at you, man, and, and tell you how it's high. Hey, these three years I've been seeking. I've been seeking fruit from this brother. I've been seeking fruit from this sister, man. Right. He's trying to see if you're doing good works. Right. But check this out. And it says, and find none. And you don't want the Lord to look at you and be like, man, I ain't finding no fruit um, being produced from this brother or from this sister, man. Right? They kind of just sitting down all day, not doing nothing, man. Right? They kind of not reading. They kind of not um damn fasting. Right? They not um uh exhorting their brothers and sisters. They not loving their brothers and sisters. They not giving alms, man. They kind of not doing any works. They just sitting around with fringes on their shirt, man. But they not doing any works, man. Right? And it says, uh, Salakia. It says, and find none. Right? And it says. Then he said unto the, the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, Salakia. I'm going to read it again from the top, verse 7. It says, Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumber it fit to the ground? And the Lord going to tell you how shy to cut you down, man. Take your spirit away from you, man. Why would I let you um continue to take up space in my garden, man? I'm just going to take you out of the truth, man. Right? And you don't want to be taken out of this truth. So make sure you're doing all that you can to make your calling and your election sure, man. Uh, firmly serving the Lord, man. We're going to get the classic, man. Right? Let's go into Revelation 3. Right? Uh, um, this is the book of Revelation, chapter 3 and verse 15, right? And it reads, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. So the Lord know your works, man. He knows that you're neither cold nor hot, right? And it says, um, I would thou were cold or hot. And the Lord said, I'd rather you be cold or hot. Meaning I'd rather you be completely out of the truth, man. Throw your Bible in the garbage. 
Throw all your fringes, all your dresses, all your hair wraps in the garbage, man. Right? I'd rather you be completely out of this truth or completely in this thing. Meaning, uh, meaning constantly serving him, constantly having him on your mind, man. Doing all that you could to make your call in the election short. Hey, and that's a heavy precept, man. Right? You literally have your Howard Shai saying, I'd rather you be out of the truth, man, or, or fully in the truth than to be trying to, uh, double minded in this thing. One day you want to read, then the next day you want to smoke weed again. One day you want to uh damn teach, and the next day you want to sit down on your ass all day playing a video game, man. The Lord said here, rather you be out the truth than to be lukewarm, man. Right? And it says, um, he says, uh, verse 16. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. The Lord said, hey, if you lukewarm, one day you want to do my work, and the next day you want to serve another guy, man, right? Hey, man, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth, man. I'm going to take you out of this truth, man. You want to be destroyed, right? Hey, so that's a, heavy, that's a heavy precept, right? So we went through three three different uh, ways to stay on fire. Uh, read, right? Meditate, and make sure you, um, you're you being strong in this thing, man. Continue to uh, 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 just to not be slothful, right? And now we're going to deal with enduring temptation, man, right? Because if you... um. If you wax faint and you're always ready to quit, anytime uh, temptation comes to pass, man, hey, you're going to be destroyed too. Awesome, man. Right? So let's go into the book of Job, right? I'm going to get a couple for enduring temptation. Right? So this is the book of Job, chapter 2 and verse 3. Right, because all the servants of the Lord, they're gonna have to go through go through temptation. They're gonna have to be chastised by the Lord, man. The Lord is gonna test you and see if you're really in this thing, man. Right? And shalom to the mighty sisters on the live. Um, sister Nurya and sister Denitra. Shalom, sisters. Right? Let's go into the book of Job. So this is the book of Job, chapter 2 and verse 3, and it reads: And the Lord said unto Satan, has thou considered my servant Job? So the same way this happened to Job, the Lord could do the same thing to you. Hey, hey, this brother on fire, man. Right? This this sister always on fire. Right? And the Lord might uh send Satan at you to really see if you're really about this thing, man. Right? Hey, man, they're doing everything. Hey, Job was perfect in the eyes of the Lord. And the Lord allowed Satan to go and tempt him, man. You understand? So the Lord could do the same thing to us. Right? So let me read this. This Job 2 and 3. And it says, And the Lord said unto Satan, has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth? And the Lord might look at you like that as a servant. Hey, this, hey they mighty, man. Right? They mighty. Right? And it says, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth the most high God and is true of evil. But check this out. And it says, and still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. So we have to endure temptation. We want to be like Job. We got to hold fast our integrity even when we're uh, being chastised. You understand? Even when we're being uh, tempted by Satan, we want to hold fast our integrity, our integrity, man. Right? That's another way to stay on fire, man. Right? Keep the faith no matter what you're going through and understand that everything is uh, in the power of the Lord. No matter if you, uh, you damn, uh, your damn uh, auntie got a uh, hit in a car accident, man. You don't want to let that make you fall out the truth, man. You kind of crying all day. Why, Lord, why would you do that, man? Why would you allow me to go through this, Lord? Right? You might get in a car accident, man. Now you ready to denounce the name of the Lord. That's what Job's wife told him to do. She said, curse the most high God and die, man. Why would you keep serving him if he allowed you to have boils all over your body? Right? If he allowed all of our kids to be destroyed, why would you keep serving him, man? Right? But Job kept his integrity. Right? He Right. Let's read that again. Um... And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth the most high God and is true of evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity, man. And that's heavy. No matter what we go through, we want to hold fast our integrity and be unmovable in this truth, man. Shouldn't nothing move us in this truth, right? No matter what we go through, we got to stay strong and continue to serve the Lord. And it says, Although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. So let me get a quick precept on that axe, right? And shalom to the sister, uh, shalawa, shalom, sister, shalawa and posh. Right? So this is the book of Acts. Let's go into the book of Acts 20. Right? So this is the book of Acts, chapter 20, and verse number 24, right? And it reads, But none of these things move me. Right? Neither count I my life dear unto myself, right? So that I might finish my course with joy. Right? Let me read that again because it's heavy, right? It says, But none of these things move me. So nothing we go through should move us. This is Paul. Paul was um, he was beat for the word, right? He was cast into prison for the word, right? 
a lot of things Paul went through, and he said, hey, none of these things move me, man. Right? And check this out. This is another heavy point. It says, neither I count my life dear unto myself. So he didn't care about his life in this world, man. He said, I don't count my life dear unto myself, man. I don't care if I'm locked up forever for this word, or neither do I care if I get put to death for this word, man, because I don't count my life dear unto myself, man. Right? I'm, I'm just a servant of the Lord. I'm a prisoner of the Lord, man. I want to live my life and uh, dedicate my life and, and lay my, my life down for the Lord, right? And it says, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received from the Lord Yahweh Shai to testify the gospel of grace of the Most High God. You see that? So we can't let nothing move us, man. Paul said, don't none of these things move me, man. Right? And let me go into the book of Syrac too. Right? So we have to endure temptation to stay on fire. Right? So this is the book of Syrac, chapter 2 and verse 4. And it reads, whatsoever is brought upon thee. Let me get verse 1, right? And then I'm going to jump to 4. <coughs> Salaki. It says, Syrac 2 and 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So if you come in this truth, you have to uh, prepare your soul for temptation, man. Right? You can't come in this truth and think everything's going to be flowers and dandies and, and, and hugs and kisses. You understand? The Lord the Lord told you to prepare your soul for temptation. Right? Even our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, he was tempted by Satan. You understand? Right? And we're going to bring that account out too. Right? So it says, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Right? Let's jump to verse 4. It says, Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. So no matter what you go through, you got to take cheerfully, man. Right? And you got to be patient when you're changed to a lower state. Right? Let's go into the account with Yahweh Shai. Right? Because if our master uh, went through this, uh, went through temptation, how much more us, man? Right? So this is the book of Matthew. Salak here. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 4 and verse 1. Right? And it reads, Salakia, right? So this is Matthew 4 and 1, and it reads, Then was Yahweh Shai led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, right? And that's plain. I'm not even going to read on in there, but the, the whole account is, 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 is mighty, man. It's a, it's a fire account. But, hey, that's the only point I wanted. Even Yahweh Shai was tempted by the devil, man. So how much more us, man? Right? And I'm going to bring out the precept that Brother Dan uh, said, Mark 8 and 34. Right? So even our Lord and Savior was tempted by the devil. So how much more us, man? Right? So this is the book of Mark, chapter 8 and verse 34. Right? Right? And it says, And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So you got to deny yourself in this thing, man. Right? And you got to bear... Uh, uh, you got to bear all your temptation and tribulation in this thing, man. That's what it means to take up your cross, man, right? And it says, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. And this is going to exactly what we read about Paul, man. Paul was ready to lay down his life for this word, you understand, right? And that was Paul bearing his cross, you understand? He was ready to give up his life, right, to live in the Lord, man. That's a beautiful precept, man, the water, through the spirit, right? So, we have to, um, we're going to go through them again. We're going to keep going through them, right? To stay on fire in this thing, you have to read. It's important to read. It's important to meditate, right? It's important that you're not slothful, man, that you, you're fervent when it comes to serving the Lord. And it's, imp it's important uh, um, to continue to keep your integrity and stay strong even when you're going through temptation and you're going through hard times in life, man, right? I'm going to bring out um, another precept that the brother Dan put earlier, man, right? So this is the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 3, and it says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. So we have to endure hardness as a good soldier of, of Yahweh Shai, right? Let's get one more, right through the Spirit. Right, so this is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13, and it reads, and it's a classic, it's a beautiful uh, scripture, right? And it says, there have no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. So every temptation we go through, man, right? All the uh, hardness that we go through, it's all common to men. You understand? The Lord said there's no temptation that taking us that isn't common to, unto men. So don't think you're going through something strange. Why would the Lord put me through this, man? There's no way I can make it through this, man. Right? Uh, it was somebody else in the past, right? Or somebody else at the same time is going through the exact same thing that you're going through, man. And the Lord is going to deliver you from it all, man. Right? And it says, but the Most High is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. And the Lord will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, man. Everything the Lord uh, 
uh, will put you through, he's going to make sure you, you have a way to get out of it, man. Right? The Lord is going to put you through that furnace of affliction to try you as gold, man. Right? And you're going to come out that other side as gold, man. As long as you continue to endure. You understand? And it says, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Right? And that's, that's at the Lord, man. Right? The Lord said anything that he puts you through, man, you're going to be able to bear it. Don't ever get uh, uh, weak hearted and faint hearted in this thing and think it's all over. Right? There's no way I can get through this, man. No matter what the Lord puts you through, he's going to uh, give you a way to uh, to uh, escape, man. Right? He's going to make sure you're strong enough to bear it, man. Right? So we have to endure temptation, man. Right? And, and hey, and it's a heavy point right here, man. Right? Another thing you have to do to stay on fire, you have to use the gifts that the Lord gave you, man. Right? So if the Lord gave you a powerful uh, spirit of exhortation, right? You know how to say the right words at the right time to uplift a brother or a sister, man. You got to use it, man. Right? If a brother calling your phone, right? Don't don't damn ignore that brother. That brother might need some counsel. If you're a good counselor and that's the gift that the uh, the Lord gave you, you got to use that uh, that gift, man. The Lord will snatch it away from you, man. If you're a good teacher, hey, man, teach, man. Right? Uh, then go on the live and teach, man. Make videos, you understand? Right? Get out there on them highways and byways and teach, man. Right? Don't forsake that gift that the Lord gave unto you, man. If you a sister that could cook, man, cook for the ministry, man. Right? If you are part of a congregation, right? Cook for the, uh, cook for the, uh, your husband, man. Right? Hey, do all that you can do, man, with the gifts that, that was given to you by the Lord, man. Right? So let's go into it. Right? So this is the book of Luke chapter like because you hey you got brothers on the highways and byways they they probably not the best reader hey and they probably don't know how to they probably not the best teacher you understand hey but they hold posts right and they ready to uh uh to lay down their life for their brothers man they still get out there and hold posts and they're ready to lay down their life for their brothers man right so they still doing the work man all you got to do is magnify the gift that the lord gave you man everybody not going to be a teacher all sisters not going to know how to cook as good as that next sister that uh, all sisters not gonna know how to make a garment as good as that next uh, that next uh, sister, man. Right? One brother might know how to uh, might not know how to give counsel like that next brother, man. Right? So don't worry about uh, um, the things that you lack. Just make sure you magnify in the office that the Lord did uh, bless you with, man. All right? All right. Let's let's go into it in Luke nineteen. All right? And it's the book of Luke, chapter nineteen, and I'm gonna start from verse eighteen, and it reads. And the second came saying, Lord, thy pound have gained thee five pounds. So this is going to the parable with the pounds, right? And these pounds represent the different uh, 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 different levels of wisdom and the different gifts that you receive from the Lord, man. Right? So you had, you had certain men that flipped their pounds. You understand? They actually used their gifts to bring people into this truth, man. Right? To make people stronger in this truth. And then you have this, this other man, right? We're going to read on. It says, Philakia, verse 20. And it says, And another came saying, Lord, Behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin, right? And you don't want to be that brother or sister who got a spiritual gift, who got a certain level of wisdom, and you never used it, man, right? Let me get a quick preset before we read on in the book of Job chapter um, 15, right? So this is the book of Job chapter 15 and verse 8, and it reads, Has thou heard the secret of the Most High, and doest thou restrain wisdom to thyself? Hey, man, that, that's wicked, for you to have a certain gift or a certain amount of wisdom and you never use it to teach, you never use it to do whatever your gift is, man. Right? You probably could be the um the best garment maker in the world and you don't want to make garments for the brothers or make dresses for your sisters, man. You don't want to sew no fringes on the garments, right? You kind of just sitting on your gift, man. That's wicked, right? I'm going to read that again. It says, has thou heard the secret of God and doest thou restrain wisdom to thyself? So that would be wicked for the Lord to give you wisdom and you restrain it to yourself, man. That's right? So let's go back into Luke 19. Right. And it says, I'm going to read verse 20 again, uh, speaking about this wicked man who didn't use his wisdom. He didn't use his gifts. Right. And it says, and another came saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. Right. So he kept the damn gift laid up in a napkin, meaning he didn't use it. You understand? But check this out. This is what Yahweh Shai said. Um, so like, I'm going to read on. It says, for I fear thee because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up that thou layest not down and and reapest that thou didst not sow, right? And it says, this is the point I want. And it says, and he said unto him, out of thy own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. So that man was called a wicked servant for hiding his talents. You understand? Hiding his gifts and never using them. The Lord called him a wicked servant, right? And it says, um, Salakia. It says, thou knewest that I was an austere man, right? So the Lord said, you already knew I was an austere man. So he, he, he basically telling that brother, you just making excuses. 
You already knew this about me, so don't try to make excuses for uh, for you being lazy, man. Right? So that's a lesson to us, and it's true. Don't make excuses for being lazy, man. Get up and do the work. Do the best that you can and, and do all that you can to magnify the name of our, our Lord, man. Right? Because that's what it's truly all about, man. It's not really about... um um. I don't want to. I don't want to say that and go over brothers and sisters' mind, right? But hey, man, it's it. This ministry is all about uh, magnifying the name of the Lord, man. Right? It's all about uh, magnifying the name of Yahweh by Shem Shai, man. Right? And it says, I'm gonna read on. It says, um, t um. So he said, Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. Wherefore, I'm, I'm gonna jump to the point, right? Another point, um. Verse 24, it's a, it's a heavy point. It says, and he said unto them that stood by, take from him the pound and give it to him that have 10 pounds. So the Lord could take, um, the, the Lord could take all the wisdom, all the gifts that he gave unto you and give it to the next brother that's going to actually use it. Give it to the next sister that's going to actually use it. So make sure if you got a gift, a, a, a God given talent and all of us have God given talents, man, we just got to learn what it is and, and use it to magnify the name of the Lord, man. Right. The Lord could take that from you and give it to the next brother or sister. So make sure you use what you got to serve the Lord, man. Right. And that's all I wanted on that, man. Right. So we got to stir up the gift of the most high God that is uh, within us, man. Right. Let's go to Second Timothy. Right. So it's the book of Second Timothy, chapter one and verse number six. Right. And it reads, wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands, right? So Paul says, stir up that gift of the most high God that's in you, man, right? And we all have a gift. You understand? We all have a gift. The Lord had gave all of us a gift, man, to use to magnify his name, right? Let me read this again. <clears throat> Salaki, it says, wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of the most high God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. So we have to stir up that gift, man, right? You know how you got like a... um. A pot of soup or whatever, a pot of uh, gumbo, whatever, man. You might have a damn, uh, uh, the damn uh, sauce fall into the bottom when you when you don't stir it. But when you stir it, it kind of rises back to the top, man. That's what you got to do. You got to stir up that gift of the Most High God that is in you. You got to use it, man. Right? You got to continue to use it, and the Lord gonna make you stronger in this thing, man. Right? Let me get that real quick in John fifteen. Right? And that's that's at the Lord. So this is John fifteen and verse. I'm gonna start from verse one. This is Yahweh Shai. It's, it's, it's red letter, and it reads. I am the true vine, right? And my father is the husbandman. So Yahweh Shai said, I'm the true vine and the most high guy is the husbandman, right? And it says, every branch in me, and we represent those branches in Yahweh Shai. It says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, right? So if you're not using your gifts to bear good fruits of this thing, you're going to be casted out. He's going to take it away. He's going to take you away, right? And it says, every branch that bear fruit, he purgeth it. That it may bring forth more fruit. And every branch that uh, bring forth fruit, he's going to make you bring forth more fruit. So if the Lord see you working hard, man, he see you using your gifts to magnify his name. He's going to make you even stronger in the spirit so that you can do more works, man. Right? So if you lazy, the Lord going to get you out of this thing. He's going to take your gifts and give it to somebody else that's going to use it. But if you on fire and you constantly doing all that you could to serve the Lord, he's going to make you stronger, man. Right? He's going to make your spirit stronger. All right? This brother been teaching this much. I'm going to put it on his spirit to teach uh, seven times more, man. Right? This sister been making two garments a week, man, doing all that she could. I'm going to put it on her spirit to make uh, five garments a week, man. Right? This brother been counseling. Uh, Right? Just... Hey, then the point is the Lord gonna uh he, if the Lord see you using your gifts, he's gonna make you stronger, man. He's gonna magnify your gifts, man. Right? Uh, um, let's read on. It says, uh, I'm gonna jump to verse four. Slocky, that's the point. That's all that's all I wanted on that, man. That's the point. That's the point, man. The Lord gonna make you stronger in this thing is if, if you're using your gifts and you're using your wisdom to magnify his name, man. Right? You can't sit on your gifts, man. Right? And let's go to 2 Timothy 4 and 2. Right. So if you if you are a, 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 a solid teacher in this thing, man, you got to be teaching, man. And that don't mean only on Friday and Saturdays when you outside on the highways and byways, man. Uh, damn, start up your phone and, and kind of shake the hand on the, on the phone, man. Right. Edify your people that you got on Facebook. Edify your people that you got on Instagram, man. Right. You understand the Lord didn't give us these devices for no reason. Right. Just to watch uh, sisters twerk on it, man. And watch brothers post guns and weed on it, man. Right. Use the devices that the Lord gave you to magnify his name. man. Right. So this is the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 4 and verse 2, right? It's a Lockheed, man, 
right? If you teaching on the um, if you teaching on social media, you might have a brother that kind of uh get weak in the flesh. He kind of go on social media trying to find a um a big booty to look at, man. Hey, he might scroll past the scripture that you posted. He might scroll past you teaching, and hey, and he might get back in the spirit, right? He was looking for some folly to get into, but now one of his brothers is on the um social media teaching, and now he's back in the spirit, man, right? So we got to use the devices that the Lord gave us, hey, and magnify his name with him, man, All right? So this is the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 2, and it reads, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, right? And, and this... Uh, a lot of a lot of times we use this on the highways and byways because it's twofold, right? You could talk about it being uh, teaching the cold and also teaching this uh, nice weather, but this really means uh, you got to be willing to teach at all times, man. That's why I said not only on Fridays and Saturdays. We got to be willing to teach when we at work and somebody asks, why do you got them fringes on your garment, right? Somebody might ask a sister, why are you always wearing a dress, man? You got to be ready to go into it and teach them. Hey, the Lord said this, the Lord said that, man, right? You might be out on a date with your, with your, uh, with your woman, right? Somebody might come up to you and ask you, hey, why your woman got on the dress? Why you got on the fringes? Why I got a Bible by y'all? Right? Why y'all always talking about God? You got to be ready to teach in and out of season, man. Right? Khan, Shalom to my brother Tommy. What's good, King? Khan, all praises. Right? And it says, I'm going to read that again from the top. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, right? And the, and the point I wanted from that is you got to be willing to teach in season and out of teaching. I mean, in out of season, right? So you can't only teach when it's a so called time to teach, right? Because on a deeper level, it's never really a perfect time to teach, right? We all, hey, as a teacher of the word, you should always be ready to teach this word and you should love to shake the hand and teach this word, man, right? So let's go into the book of Romans, chapter 10, and verse 14, right? The book of Romans, the 10 and verse 14. And if you constantly teaching, right? If you constantly teaching this word, that's going to help you stay on fire. Why have the gift to be able to teach, but you only want to teach uh, two days out the week, man? Right? You should be, hey, man. Hey, I love when I, I press start the live, man. The Lord put it on the spirit to me to get on here and teach, man. I love bringing it out to my people, man. Right? I love to be able to uh, have a gift that, that I could use to uplift my brothers and sisters in the spirit and ultimately to magnify the name of the Lord, man. Right? Because your labor is not vain in, in, in the Lord, man. Right? It could be zero people on this live, and I'm going to bring it out like it's uh, 3,000 people on the live because I know the Lord got the angels still watching. You understand? So that's what it's all about, just magnifying the name of the Lord. Right? So it reads, this Matthew, uh, Romans chapter 10 and verse 14, it reads, How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? So how are we going to wake up our people, hey, eh, 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 if they never hear about him, man? Right? So this is a beautiful device, social media, to use to wake up our people, man. Right? But check this out. It says, whom they have not heard. And how shall they hear without a preacher, man? Right? And we all want to get out of this uh, captivity as fast as possible. So we should want to teach as much as possible, man. Right? Spreading this word as much as possible to try to wake up as much people as we can as possible, man. Right? And Shalom. Uh, Shalom Duluth. Shalom, King. And um, Shalom to the sister Abra. Ahava Shamaru. Shalom. Right. Right. And the sister said, that's right. Got to stay feet in the sheep. So our people wake up. That's what it's all about, man. It's all about waking up Jake, man. Right. It's all about waking up Jake. Right. And it says, I'm going to read verse 15 again. Romans 10 and 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things, man. So how shall our people know this truth if it, unless it's being taught, man? So we have to firmly Teaching this thing, right? Shalom, King. Uh, Brother Mayan, Shalom, King. Right? Let's get another one. Right? So, it's the book of um, 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, and verse number 9. And it reads, Oh, uh, Salaki, it's not what I want. I believe it's 1 Thessalonians 2 and 9, Salaki. Right? So, this is the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 2, and verse 9. For you remember, brethren, our labor and travail, for laboring night and day. Because we would not be chargeable unto any of you, right? So we have to labor night and day, man, right? That means throughout the week, all day, every day, man, right? It's not just a Friday and Saturday thing, man. We have to always be willing to teach this word, always willing to labor, man, always willing to abound in the work of the Lord, right? And it says, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you, we preach unto you the gospel of the Most High God, man. We don't want to be chargeable unto any of the, um, the saints of the Lord, man, right? We want to preach constantly the words of the Most High God, right? So we went through 
uh, ways to stay on fire. You read. You got to read. You have to meditate on the words of God. Right. You can't be slothful. You got to be fervent in your works. Right. You have to endure temptation. Don't let temptation make you weak. And now you don't want to serve the Lord anymore. man. Right. And you have to use your gifts. Right. So what else can we do? Right. How could I forget this? man? We have to pray. man. Right. So let's go into it. We have to be praying in these last days. Right. Let me get an account. Right. With a mighty, a mighty, a mighty account. Right. And it's dealing with a sister. man. So even our sisters, hey, they, they was on fire for the, our foremothers. They was on fire for the Lord, too, man. Right. So this is the book of Luke, chapter two and verse 36. And it reads, and there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phenuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. Watch and check this out. And it says, and she was a widow about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served the most high God with fastings and prayers day and night. So we had one of our foremothers in them, man, right? She was constantly at the temple uh, serving the Lord with prayers and fastings day and night, man, on fire for the Lord, man. She was on fire for the Lord, right? And it says, and she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all that look for redemption in Jerusalem. And that's heavy, man. Everybody that looked for redemption in Jerusalem, she, she was uh, speaking about the Lord to all of them, man. Everybody that she seen come by the temple, she, she was speaking about the Lord to them, man. Right? She probably teaching them the gospel. Hey, I know Yahweh Shai died for us, man. Now we had we have a, a chance uh, um, through his death to repent and come back into this thing, man. You had a sister out there day and night serving the Lord with fastings and prayers. And she teaching uh, teaching about Yahweh Shai to everybody that came by the temple, man. Hey, she was on fire. And the sister said, hey, we still on fire. Hey, man. Hey, and we still got sisters on fire today for this word, man. Right? Let's get another one. Let's go into the book of Acts. Right? So it's the book of Acts, chapter 6 and verse 4, and it reads, But we will give ourselves continually to prayer. Right? So we have to give ourselves continually to prayer. We have to constantly pray throughout the day. You understand? Right? And it says, And to the ministry of the word. So just as much as we got to give ourselves to the ministry of the word, teaching, right? Exhortating, right? Going out and doing the work on the highways and byways. We have to be praying just as much, man. The Lord said, give yourself continually to prayer, man. Right? Uh, Con, I'm about to pull that one too. Pray without season, right? So this is the book of First Thessalonians. Salakia chapter 5 and verse 17. And it reads, pray without ceasing, right? And we have to pray without ceasing, meaning we have to firmly pray. We have to always be praying throughout the day, right? Salakia. Praying as much as we can, man. Right? It's, hey, man. Hey, prayer is powerful. Right? It's power in prayer, man. We heard that in the world. And I'm going to get an account to show how fervently we're supposed to pray, man. And it's a parable of Yahweh Shah. Let's go into the book of Luke chapter 18. Right? It's a mighty it's a mighty parable right here. Check this out. So it's the book of Luke chapter 18. And we're going to start from the top, verse 1. <clears throat> right? And it reads, And he spake a parable unto them to this end. That men are always to pray and not to faint, right? So we can't get uh, faint harder in this thing. Anytime we're going through something and we really feel weak and we really feel like we can't go on, the first thing on our mind should be is to pray to the Lord. You understand? That should be the first thing on your mind is to ask counsel of the Most High God. How shall I, how should I move from here? You understand? Don't just get faint hearted and give up. Ask the Lord, how should I move from here? Lord, can you strengthen me? Lord, can you carry my burdens for me so I can continue to walk in this thing? Right? Let me get a quick preset before we read on. Right? So it's the book of um, Psalms, chapter 55 and verse 22. And it reads, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. So pray and cast your burdens upon the Lord. Don't give up, man. Right? Cast your burdens upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee, and he shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Right? So let's go back into Luke 18. I'm going to read verse 1 again. And it says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men are always to pray and not to faint. Right? Saying there was in a city a judge, which feared not the Most High, neither regarded men. Right? So now he's going into a parable. You understand? And it says, And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. Right? And check this out. It says, He would not for a while... But afterward, he said within himself, though I fear not the most high God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming, she weary me. So you had a wicked judge and the Lord made it a point, a point to say that this man doesn't even fear the most high God. But hey, the woman came to him so much 
continually asking him the same thing that he said, hey, man, I'm just going to give her what she asking for. Hey, because she's wearying me, man. Right? She's making me wax weary in this thing. So how much more the Lord? This is what this parable is talking about. We're going to read on, right? And it says, and the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge saith, right? And it says, and show not the most high God avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with him. So the Lord is saying, hey, you had a wicked judge who answered his sister because she constantly cried out unto him. How much more of me, man? The righteous, the righteous power, Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, the most high God. If that continue to cry out unto me, I'm going to give y'all what y'all asked for, man. Right? That's what this parable is telling you. Right? And I'm going to read that again. Verse 7. And showed out the Most High God avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with, with him. He said, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. You see that? So, hey, we got to continue to cry out unto the Lord. And eventually the Lord going to hear you, man. He's going to give you what you're asking for, man. Right? Let's go into another precept. Go back into Romans 12. Right? So don't just ask the Lord for something one time, right? Lord, can you increase my faith, right? Can you put it on my spirit to read more, right? You only ask one time. And now two months later, you mad at the Lord because you said, hey, he, he never increased my faith. I still feel the same. Hey, man, you didn't, you didn't really cry out to the Lord. You only asked him one time. Continually ask the Lord, man. And the Lord is going to hear you, man. Right? And make sure you're praying for spiritual things and not carnal things, man. Right? And oh, uh, this is the book of Romans, chapter 12 and verse 12. And it reads, Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. So we have to continue instant in prayer, man. Continue to pray, man. Constantly pray, man. Don't be uh, don't deal slackly when it comes to prayer. Right? We shouldn't be praying one time a day, man. Right? Hey, one time is better than zero. But hey, if you're praying one time a day, you should look to increase the amount of times you pray, man. Try to pray as much as possible, man. Right. Uh, let's go to the book of Luke. Back to Luke 21. And let's go to verse 36. This Luke 21 and 36. And it reads, watch ye therefore and pray always. Right. So constantly throughout the scriptures, you see that the Lord is telling us to pray always. We should be praying a lot, man. Right. And it says that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all things that shall come to pass and to stand before the son of man. And I know a lot of people say, hey. It's hard for me to pray a lot because after a while, I don't know what to ask for. I don't know what to say, right? You, hey, you could repeat something that you said already, right? Like we just read about the sister in Luke 18, right? Or, or sometimes you don't have to ask for anything. Sometimes you could just give praises to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right? You understand? Thank the Lord, right? You don't, you don't always have to ask for something when you're praying. You can get on your knees and thank the Lord and get back up. Thank the Lord for you having food to eat, man. Thank the Lord for you having water to drink for a roof over your head, for clothing on your back, man. Right? And give praises unto the Lord. You don't always have to ask for something from the Lord, man. Right? So, um, I'm going to read this again. It says, I'm going to read this again from the top. Luke 21 and 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all things that should come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Right? You see that? So, we got to pray always, man. Right? Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 26 and 41. Right? The book of Matthew, chapter 26, and verse 41, and it reads, Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation, right? The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And that's why it's um it's important to pray, man. Because a lot of you gotta uh keep your spirit strong. Because your spirit is, is willing to serve the Lord. For like, for example, hey, your spirit is willing to read 30 chapters a day. Your spirit is willing to um fight off uh your sleep. And uh, stay up all night to read and to study and to pray. But your flesh is weak, man. Your flesh is going to tell you, no, nah, I'm sleepy, man. Right? Let's stop reading. Let's go get a bite, man. Right? Let's stop praying. Let's go do this. Your flesh is constantly at war with your spirit. So through prayer, you're keeping your spirit strong. So that way your spirit can try to uh, win that battle with your flesh, man. Right? Your flesh might tell you, let's stop. Um, Let's stop. Let's read six chapters, man. But your spirit is so strong. You're like, man, nah, I'm going to read 12, man. Right? You're going to fight off your flesh and be like, man, I'm going to read 12. I don't care what my, my flesh telling me I'm hungry, my flesh saying I'm sleepy, my flesh saying I'm thirsty. I'm going to continue on this fast, man. I'm going to continue to read, man. Right? So it says the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. That's why it's important to pray, man. And speaking of fasting, we have to fast, man. Right? Right? It, it, fasting goes hand in hand with prayer. There's certain spirits that you can't, um, you can't get off of you except you pray and fast, man. Right? Let me get that real quick and mark. Right, Yahweh Shai told us this. Uh, let me see if I can find this precept. I believe it's Mark 9. 
right? So, um, so like it, bear with me. Con, this is what I want. So, this is the book of um, Mark chapter 9 and verse. I'm going to start from 26. We're going to get straight to the point. And it reads, I'm going to start from 25. When Yahweh Shai saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I tire thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. Because you had a man that brought his son into Yahweh Shai and told him, Hey, my, my son dealing with spirits, man, he kind of foaming out the mouth. Sometimes he fall into the fire. Sometimes he fall into the water. He got he, He's blind, man. He can't see, right? And check this out. It says, verse 26, And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him, and he was as one dead. And so much that many said he is dead, right? But check this out. But Yahweh Shai took them by the hand and lifted him up, and when he and he arose, right? And when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, "Why could we not cast him out?" So you had the apostles asking Yahweh Shai, "Damn, why can't we cast him out? Right? Like, how was you able to do that so easily, but we couldn't cast him out?" Let's see what the Lord said. It says, "And he said unto them." This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting, right? So sometimes you might be dealing with a demon. You might have that lust spirit on you, man, right? You might be lusting after something in the world that you know you shouldn't have, right? And, and you, you probably constantly praying. You probably been praying for the last three months and you wondering, why can't I get rid of this demon, man? Why is this demon constantly on my mind, right? It's because you're not praying and fasting. It's certain things that you can't get rid of with just prayer. You have to, uh, uh, you have to pray and fast, man, and the Lord will get rid of these things for you, man. Right. So that's why fasting is powerful. Right. Let's go into the book of Ezra. Right. Let's go into the book of Ezra. So we have to fast also to stay on fire in this thing, man. Right. So it's the book of Ezra, <coughs> chapter eight and verse twenty-three, and it reads. So we fasted and besought our God for this, and he was entreated of us. You see that? And the Lord will give you what you ask him for if you just uh, fast for it, man. Sometimes that prayer is not going to do it. But when you add that fast, hey, the Lord, the, uh, your prayer is going to become louder into the Lord. It's going to get to the Lord faster, right? Let me see if I can, um, I probably can't find this precept. But it's a precept in Psalms that tell you how uh, when you fast and pray, hey, your prayers get back to you like a boomerang, man. Right? You kind of pray to the Lord and it comes right back to you. Let me see if I can find it. Um, so like it, bear with me. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find it. And I'm in a new source, so I kind of got nothing highlighted. Yeah, I kind of can't find that, right? But I'm gonna read this again at Ezra 8 and 23, and it says, So we fasted and besought our God for this, and he was entreated of us. You see that? So when you fast and, and beseech the Most High God for something, he's gonna be entreated of you, man. You understand? He's gonna um give you what you're asking for, right? On a, on a higher level, right? Your percentage, your percentage. Uh, uh, of that prayer being answered, gonna go up if you if you're uh, fasting while you're praying. You understand, right? So let's go into another precept. Oh yeah, it's a mighty one, right? Let's get into it. Go to the book of Second Ezra, right? And I flip right to the page, man. That's the spirit, right? So like, no, I didn't, <laughs> right? So this is the book of Second Ezra, chapter six and verse thirty-five. I was one page away, right? But this is a mighty account. It says, and it came to pass after this that I wept again. And fasted seven days in like manner. So our forefather Ezra, he fasted seven days, right? And it says that I might fulfill the three weeks which he told me, right? And check this out. And it says, and in the eighth night was my heart vexed within me again. And I began to speak before the most high for my spirit was greatly set on fire, man. And that's what, the, that's the name of this lesson. How to, uh, how to, um, how to uh, continue to be on fire, man. And Ezra said when he fasted, he said his spirit was greatly set on fire, man. So it's important to fast. And, and I, I can attest to that, man. There's plenty of times I've been weak in the spirit and I proclaim to I, I proclaim to fast. And like 10 hours within the fast or after I'm done with that fast, I just feel uh, way stronger in the spirit, man. Right? So it's important to fast. Right? So he says, for my spirit was greatly set on fire and my soul my soul was in distress. The water, king. The water, king. I definitely want that precept. The water, I... I knew it was in there, man. I was just looking at Psalm 35, right? And 13, right? Khan, Tawada King. So this is the book of Psalms, chapter 35 and verse 13. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth, right? And I humbled my soul with fasting, right? And that's a beautiful way to humble yourself before the Lord, man. Right? To afflict your soul, man. Don't eat, man. Put on a, 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 a dirty... Uh, sackcloth, man. You might have a, a t if you don't have sackcloth, you might then rip your shirt, man, just to humble yourself before the Lord. Put ashes on your head, you understand? 
This is these is ways that you humble yourself before the Lord. And I believe it was either Judith or Esther. If I'm not mistaken, it was Esther. She put dung on her head, man. She put little uh, 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 shit on her head, man, to humble herself before the Lord, man. <clears throat> right? And, and us in our carnal mind, we might think about that and laugh at it. But hey, on a spiritual level, that's that's super humble, man. Right? So let's read that again from the top. This Psalms 35 and 13. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting, and my my prayer returned into my own bosom. So, um, the King David said he humbled his soul with fasting, and his prayer returned into his own bosom. Meaning, once he prayed, the prayer came right back into him. Man, the Lord answered his prayer. Man, it's like he threw a boomerang, hey, and it came right back. Man, you understand? That's what happens when you fast and pray into the Lord. Right? Let's get one more dealing with fasting. Right. So, we, when you fast, you got to make sure you're fasting for the right reasons. Also, right? You're not fasting to win a debate. Right. You're not fasting to be smarter than your brothers. Right. You're not fasting to be um, uh, nothing. that has any folly, man. You got to be uh, fasting for the right reason. Right. And it says this Isaiah chapter 58 and verse six. And it reads, um, it's not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness to undo the heavy burdens. So you might be dealing with heavy burdens, man. You want to fast for that, man. Right, you might be stressing a lot. You want to fast, man. Something might be uh on your mind. You got a bunch of mortal thoughts on your mind weighing you down, man. You want to fast for that, man. Right? And it says, uh, to unloose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. And you want to break all these spiritual yokes off of you, man. Right? And you could do that through fasting, man, through fasting and prayer, man. Right? So we uh hey man, we went through how to stay on fire. You read, you meditate. Don't be slothful, man. Endure temptation. Use the spiritual gifts that the Lord gave you, right? Pray. Fast. And now we're going to go with, uh, you got to speak and hang with the wise, man. Right? Don't have your company be a bunch of, um, uh, damn, your old so-called uh, homies in the world that's smoking blunts all day, man. That's looking to uh, treat their sisters like horror mongers. That's walking around with pistols, robbing their brothers all day, right? Sisters don't want to be hang hanging with your old uh, stripper friends, man. Right? Your, uh, your harlot friends, man. Right? What kind of counsel can they give you? You understand? What 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 kind of knowledge can they give you, man? Right? So you want to be hanging around the wise and, and, and you want to speak with the wise, man. Right? So let's go. If, if if I'm around one of my worldly friends and I pick up a bacon cheeseburger, a pork bacon cheeseburger, they're not going to tell me, hey, brother, you better not eat that, man. Right? You're going against the laws of God. They're going to allow me to eat it, man. They might even cheer me on to eat it, man. Right? So that's why you want to make sure you keep good company. Right? And, and chiefly, you want to Make sure you're hanging around other commandment keepers, man. Right? So let's bring this out. It's the book of Cyrax, chapter 37, and verse 12, and it reads, But be continually with the godly man. You see that? So the Lord said, be continually with the godly man. Right? This is another way we're going to stay on fire. Because, hey, I might be out of the spirit, and one of my brothers make a video, or one of my brothers read a precept, right? And I, I might hear it, and next thing you know, I'm back on fire. I'm feeling back strong in the spirit, man. Right? So it says, be continually with a godly man whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord, whose mind is according to thy mind and will sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry. You see that? So you want to be continually with the godly, a godly man. I keep the commandments like you. So that way when you're going off, they can let you know that you're going off. That way when you, um, you kind of got spirits on you that you can't even perceive yourself, your brother can be like, hey, brother, you've been being kind of prideful lately, brother. Hey, brother, you've been, uh, hey, you, you've been doing this lately, man, right? That's why you want to be continually with another wise uh, wise brothers or wise sisters, man. They'll let you know when you're going off. They'll give you counsel, man. They'll uplift you in the spirit, right? Salaki, so we're going to go back into, um, we're going to stay in Syrac for the next couple verses, Salaki. So right, so this is the book of Syrac, chapter 6 and verse 36, and it reads, And if thou seest a man of understanding, Get thee betimes unto him, and let thy foot with the steps of his door. Meaning, if you see a man of understanding, always try to be around that brother, man. Right? For the same reason that we just stated. Hey, that brother give you counsel. Right? You can learn how to move in certain situations. Right? By watching that brother or sister. Right? They, uh, every time y'all talk, y'all speaking about God. You understand? Instead of uh, starting to speak about all matters of folly. Right? And the sister said, correction sows love to your brother and sister. Right? And that goes back to the law, Leviticus 19 and 17. Man, right? You, Hey, you got to rebuke a person so they uh, won't suffer in sin, man. That's what it's all about. But how can somebody that's not uh, following the commandments rebuke you, man? Right? They're going to watch you be in sin and they're not going to say nothing. Right? That's why you want to continually be with uh, people that keep the commandments. That's why it's a beautiful thing to be a part of a congregation or a part of a camp. 
Not saying some brothers can't go off in, 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 within camps, but you got a lot of people that um, look down on their brothers and sisters. That's a part of a camp, man. Right? Hey, but the Lord tells us to be around other people that keep the commandments, man. You understand? Right? So um, I'm going to read that again. Sirach 6 and 36. And it says, And if thou seest a man of understanding, get thee betimes unto him. The Lord literally tells you to get thee betimes unto a man or a, a sister of understanding, man. Right? And it says, Um... And let thy foot with the steps of his door, right? And that's a and that's a heavy point too. The sister said, "Gotta know how to take correction." That's a heavy point because you definitely gotta know how to take correction in this thing, man. Right? I'm gonna bring that out. It's the book of Job, chapter six and verse twenty-four. And that's what a lot of uh, so-called individual lights brothers that uh, that that bash camps and never want to be around uh, other brothers in the truth. They kind of want to do their own thing, and they don't want to have that brother that's going to get on their ass when they're going off, man. Right? A lot of people is like that. That's why they want to be by themselves. They don't want somebody to tell them when they're going off, man. Right? So this is the book of Job, to the 6 and verse 24, and it reads, Teach me, and I will hold my tongue. Cause me to understand wherein I have erred. Right? So our forefather Job, he said, hey, teach me, and I'm going to hold my tongue, man, and let me know where I'm going off at, man. Hey, it's a beautiful thing to, um, to accept reproof, man. It's a beautiful thing for your brother to let you know, hey, brother, you going off, man, right? And it's a beautiful thing if you could just, like, shut your mouth and, and, and hear him out, man, right? That brother might save your life, man, right? Let me get a quick precept on that. That's why it's a beautiful thing to congregate with other brothers and sisters, man. The Lord said, gather yourselves together, man, right? So this is the book of Syrac, chapter 20, verse 3, and it reads, How good is it when thou art reproved? You see that? So the Lord said, how good is it when you're reproved, man? It's a beautiful thing to be reproved, man, right? And it says... To show repentance. And when you're reproved, when a brother lets you know you're going off, you're being prideful, right? You're being rebellious. You're being uh, uh, obese. A slock it. You're being damn. I can't even think of the word I was just thinking about, right? But you're being prideful. You're being rebellious, right? Obstinate. That's the word I was looking for. You're being damn obstinate. You're being stiff-necked. You're being hard-headed, right? It says, uh, to show repentance. It's a beautiful thing to repent. It says, for so shalt thou escape willful sins. So don't be that brother or sister that can't accept a uh, correction, man, right? And that's... That, the way, by accepting correction, you're going to escape willful sin. You understand? Oh, I'm going off? Thank you. Now I can go repent for it and never do it again, man. It's a beautiful thing to accept a uh, uh, reproof, man. Right? So let's get another precept on um, constantly being around godly brothers and godly sisters, man. Right? So it's the book of Syrac, chapter 9 and verse 15. Because the Lord said this, man. It says, let thy talk be with the wise, right? So you got to let your talk be with the wise. You understand? Like we were just saying earlier, you don't want to be talking with somebody that's going to um, convince you to uh, to sin, right? Just to make it plain, for lack of better terms, you don't want to be around people that's going to convince you or motivate you to sin, man, right? And it says, and all thy communication and the law of the Most High God. And you want all your communication to be in the law of the Most High God. That's going to keep you on fire. Hey, you might be... Your mind might be going uh, to the left. Your mind might be so lucky, to the damn right, to the left. Right? You might be thinking about all different things. And now you get around a brother or a sister that, that's not going to do nothing but talk about God. Now you got God back on your mind. Now you back on fire, man. Right? So it's important to let thy talk be with the wise and all thy communication and the law of the most high. Because that's going to keep you on fire if you're constantly talking about this word, man. Right? You want to always be talking about this word, man. Right? Oh, let's go. Let's get another one, man. Syrac kind of talk about this a lot. So it says, Syrac 27 and verse 12. If thou be among the indiscreet, observe the time. So basically the Lord's saying, if you're around the indiscreet, if you're around the wicked, if you're around uh, uh, all matters of vain people, you understand? The Lord said, observe the time, meaning, hey, hey measure the time, man. Don't be around them for damn uh, five hours out of the day, six hours out of the day. You might want to go visit your family, right? And they might not be in this truth, right? We got to still be... um. You gotta still be practical. That don't mean you can't hang around your auntie because she's not in the truth. That don't mean you can't hang around your brother because he's not in the truth. But you don't want to be around him all day, right? Talking about vanity all day. Watching vain movies and TV shows all day. You can spend time with him, but make sure you're measuring the time when you do these things. You understand? You don't have to be... You can't be over-righteous in this truth, man. Don't be over-righteous, man. I don't want to visit my grandma no more because she... She she not in the truth, man. Right? Don't be over-righteous or over-righteous and over-wise in this truth. You're going to destroy yourself being over-righteous, man. Right? And it says, if thou be among the indiscreet, observe the time. So the Lord said, just make sure you're observing the time, man. Don't spend your whole day with him, man. Right? Don't spend your next seven uh, seven weeks with him, man. Right? It says, 
but be continually among men of understanding. So you want to be continually among brothers and sisters that understand the scriptures, man, like you do, man. Right? Be with like-minded people, man. Right? And check this out. It's a heavy one. Let's go into the book of Ecclesiastes 4 and 9. Right? And it's a classic right here. It's the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 9. And it reads, um, it says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Right? For if they, so the Lord told you plain, two better than one, for they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. So now if you fall in this thing, you're feeling weak in this thing, you're going to have another brother that's going to be able to open the Bible, right? Give you counsel through the scriptures of the Lord, and they're going to uplift you in this thing, man. It's just like on a physical level, if you actually fall, you're going to have your brother or sister that's going to reach out their hand to you, kind of bring you back in this thing, man, right? But if you're alone, you kind of fall and break your leg, who's going to get you to the hospital, man? Right? You kind of in the middle of the damn forest. You fall, crack your ankle, right? You crack, you crack your right ankle and you damn uh, break your left knee, right? Who's going to grab your hand and put you in the car and take you to the hospital? Nobody, man. Right? So it's good. That's why the Lord said two is better than one, man. Right? You're going to kind of be left out there. Right? And it says, uh, but woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he have not another to help him up like we just uh, went into. You're not going to have nobody to help you up if you're alone when you fall. And it says, um, it says, uh, uh, for, verse 10, for if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he have not another to help. Salaki, I read that already. Verse 11, <coughs> Salaki, bear with me. It says, again, if two lie together, then they have heat, man. And it's going back to the, uh, this lesson, man. It's all about staying on fire. So if, if two lie together on a physical level, if you lying with somebody, right, y'all could uh, uh, give each other heat, man. Right? Say you outside in the cold, that kind of uh, in the tent, y'all don't have no cover. Y'all lie together, they're going to have heat, man. You understand? And on a, a spiritual level, when you with another brother that's on fire, Right, that other brother on fire, he always want to teach. He always want to do anything to serve the Lord and magnify the name of the Lord. You might be waxing faint and getting weak in this thing, but you're like, damn, my brother always on fire, man. Right, my sister always on fire, man. Now she's going to uplift you in the spirit. Now y'all going to have, y'all both want to have heat, man. So it says, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? But how can you stay fire, how can you stay on fire alone, man? Right? Because you're going to have brothers that are going to tell you, hey, brother, you're not doing enough, man. Right? Why I never see you with your friends on no more, man? Why I never see you? Why you never want to teach at Kent no more, man? Right? Why you Why you never reading no more, man? Right? Your brother's going to let you know that, and that's going to keep you on fire. But if you're an individual, like, you alone in this thing, man, right? You, um, Hey, man, it's going to be kind of hard for you to stay on fire, man. Right? Right? And it says, but how can one be warm alone? That's the point I wanted on that, right? Hey, so we got to... Hey, when you first came in this truth, you love this thing, man. Right? You want to be like how you was the first day you learned that you was an Israelite. You went to go, you went to buy your first KJV Bible, right? Uh sisters went to go buy their first dress and put the fringes on it. Brothers, brothers bought their first friend's shirt, brought their first head wrap, man. You was on fire, man. Right? Hey, man, you was on fire. You want to be like that until the end, man. Right? You don't want it to become a chore now. Hey, I've been in this thing for a long time now. It's not the same no more. A brother's bringing out the scriptures. I already heard that preset, man. Right? Hey, man, you got to always be on fire, man. Right? Don't don't let this thing get uh, so-called boring to you, man. This truth can't get boring to you and become a chore. Uh, I don't feel like praying no more, man. It's not the same as when I used to do it, man. No, man. Right? You got to be like how it was when you first came in this thing, man. Let's bring this out. This Revelation chapter 2 and verse 4, and it reads. Is this? Um, Con, 2 and verse 4, it says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. And it's red letters. This is how I speaking. It says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou has left thy first love, man. And the Lord going to feel some type of way against you if you leave your first love, right? And your first love is this wisdom, is this word, man. Right? So you don't want to leave your first love. You want to love this thing like the first day you learned that you was an Israelite. That first day you seen somebody going to uh, Deuteronomy 28, right? And show you that... um. Slave sis was in the Bible, right? And showed you that the uh, the Most High hates the so-called white man. You want to be on fire like that first day you learned these things, man. Right? And it says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from when thou art fallen, and repent. Hey, and if you feel like you're falling in this thing, and it's truth becoming a chore unto you, hey, just repent, man. And try to do all that you could to, uh, to be like you was in that first day you got this truth. Right? And it says, and do the first works. You see that? So Yahweh Shai said, do the first works, man. Or else I will come unto thee quickly and will re remove thy candlestick out of his place, except I'll repent. And we read at the beginning of this um, 
the beginning of this lesson that the candles, uh, the, the spirit of a man is a candlestick to the Lord, man. Right. So the Lord said he's going to remove your spirit from you, man. Right. Except you, if, if you don't repent and continue in your first works, man. Right. And we're going to get a, uh, another one. Let's go into the book of Job. Because Job felt the way a lot of us feel, right? You, you don't feel like you was when you first came in the truth, man. You feel like you're getting a little weaker, man. You wish you was on fire like you was when you first learned this thing. Hey, Job felt the same way, right? Check this out. So this is the book of Job, chapter 29, and verse number 1. And it reads, Moreover, Job continued in his parable and said, Oh, that I were as in months past, as in the days when the Most High God preserved me, when his candles shine upon my head, and when by his light, I walked through darkness. So Job basically telling you, man, hey, I wish I was how I was at months past, man. Right? When I was on fire for the Lord, man. Right? When his uh, when I first received this light, man. Right? And it says, as I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of the Most High God was upon my tabernacle, when the Almighty was yet with me, when my children were about me, when I washed my steps with butter, right? And the rock poured me out rivers of oil. And we know that rock. And the spirit is talking about uh, Yahweh Shai, man, right? So he said, "I was how I, how I was, I, I was how I was, and um, and months past, man. When I first came into this thing, when I first got the secrets of God upon my tabernacle, man, I was on fire. Well, now I'm waxing, I'm waxing weak, man, right? So hey, I, it be like that sometime, right? And I'm gonna get another one. I'm gonna get um, one more, right? Let's go to the Book of Revelation 22. Right, so we got to stay on fire in these last days, man. Right, this Revelation chapter 22 and verse 14. And it reads, um, I'm, uh, verse 12, Salaki, it says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. So Yahweh Shai is coming back quickly, man, and his reward is with them. To give every man according as his work shall be. And the Lord is going to reward you according as your work shall be, man. Right, so you got to be on fire in this thing, man. Right, you want the Lord to come back and be like, hey, well done, thou faithful servant, man. Right? You want the Lord to come back and give you uh, the kingdom of heaven. Right? You don't want the Lord to come back and destroy you with the wicked. You understand? Right? Come on. All praise to the most high, man. Lord willing, brothers and sisters was edifying this thing, man. Right? We went through how to stay on fire. We went through, uh, you got to read. You got to meditate. Can't be slothful. You got to endure temptation. You got to use the gifts that the Lord gave you. You got to pray. You got to fast. You got to make sure you, uh, you, um, uh, speak with the wise, hang with the wise, hang with other brothers and sisters that can let you know when you're going off, that keep the commandments like you so that can talk about the Bible, right? And you got to continue in your first works, man. You got to continue to love this word like you did when you first got it until the day you die, man, right? Lord willing, this is edifying to brothers and sisters, man, right? I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh, Shai, right? I love y'all, Yahshua, Shalom, and come Yahshua!